Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Knowledge. Before we begin this video, there are some queries and suggestions from the previous video for which we are extremely thankful and uh, they are to be addressed. So, the first one is that this diagram is just used to bring the three keywords in one frame and hasn't really got much to do with the union, intersection, complement or any of those operations of Venn diagram. A machine is set to learn if its performance of doing a certain task increases with experience. Also, while it's 100% correct that there are three main types of machine learning, many algorithms don't strictly fall under only one category. There are many algorithms, for example, say a um, recommender system that may see parts of supervised and unsupervised and come up with an optimum solution. Now that you have installed scikit-learn and the other required libraries, Let's dive forward. Before we begin to tune or build our model, we'll obviously first need to load the data to begin our work in the very first place, right? Also, on a short note, uh, we don't use all the data available to train our model. We reserve some part of it for testing our model. Now, why can't we use same set of data for uh, training and testing? Simple, because the model would already know the correct label for those instances. It is like getting same sum in exercise as it was given in solve problem section example before or uh, getting the exact same question in test which your teacher taught a day before. I hope you get the picture. We'll discuss more about splitting our data in training and testing set later but first let's get clear with loading the data first. The library itself comes with a few small data sets which are known as toy data sets and they are mostly used for uh, seeing the manner in which classification and regression algorithms are being implemented. Here is a list of all the standard toy data sets mentioned in the documentation of this library. Since they are pre-built, no downloading is required and uh, we can load them as follows. First of all, we'll import scikit-learn. Now, from scikit-learn, we will import datasets. If you are interested in viewing the complete list, you can always write in the IR and in the bracket you will have to write datasets. Ok, so the complete list has been loaded, but we are only interested in loading the toy datasets. So let's just name a variable say iris and we will write datasets dot load iris. So now iris contains the iris data set and we want to know that uh, how many example, uh, how many samples are there, what kind of features are there, how many features are there. So let's start exploring this. We can write print iris dot. After that we can write, uh, okay, the list has been popped up. We can use data, feature names, file names. If we use uh, the feature names, then it will actually show that what are the column headings. So uh, let's write feature names. So you can see that there are four columns. First one containing sepal length in centimeter, second one containing sepal width in centimeter, third one containing petal length and fourth one containing petal width. So there are four columns. Let's see what's the data. Print iris dot data so you can see it has been written that squeeze text 150 lines so means that uh, there are 150 examples let's double click on this to expand this okay so as you can see uh, as we had seen earlier there were four columns and uh, accordingly four columns have been shown and 150 examples are there so now we know that there are 150 flowers whose uh, sepal width and length and petal width and length have been recorded. Now let us see what are the target values and uh, under what name are they saved. So we will again write print iris dot target so 0, 1 and 2 are the values in which they are mapped. So fifth, first 50, so there are three kinds of flowers. That's why we have three values. 
okay, under the target section and let us see, uh, see their names print iris dot target underscore names okay something's wrong I messed up the syntax a bit print iris dot target names okay yes so the three values which had been mapped to 0 1 and 2 are actually the flower setosa versicolo and virginica for more details about this data set you can always write print iris dot followed by descr all in caps descr this will give you a description about this data set Okay, let's double click to expand this squeeze text. Yeah. So, as you can see, everything has been spe specified over here. For example, number of instances are 150, 50 in each three classes, number of attributes are four, which we had already seen earlier. And these attribute informations are sepal length, sepal width, and etc. The classes are also specified over here. So, in the DSCR attribute, you can also find who's the author, at what time was this data set released and uh, other specific details. Like we used uh, load iris a few moments ago, you can similarly load any data by typing uh, for example load underscore digits or whichever you wish in the same way. Other than the toy data sets, the other set of uh, real world data sets can be fetched and downloaded if necessary. These are the list of data sets that can be loaded using the fetch command. Again, this complete list has been taken from the documentation itself. OpenML.org is also a very uh, popular public repository for machine learning data. Here's how we can download a data set from there. Suppose we want to download this data set of mice protein levels, which are helpful in studying associative learning. So I'll just write, I'll just search mice protein press the enter key yeah. and this result which pops up here all the description about this data set can be found and uh, we have to download this data set only using scikit-learn so we import sklearn and from sklearn we import our data sets and after that from sklearn dot data sets we import fetch fetch open ml after this we need to name uh, give a name to a variable and uh, we will write fetch underscore open ml and here we need to specify two things about the file name is equal to mice protein and uh, separated by version custom 4 mice has been loaded and we can see the details as follows so that is how you can download any data set from the openml.org repository. We can also generate our own data sets in scikit-learn using the commands which begin with make that is make underscore. For example, make underscore uh, classifications or make underscore regression. But uh, we are skipping this for now as we believe that uh, it is relatively less important from beginner's point of view as compared to other discussed methods previously. Depending on the data and its format, we can use different libraries for it. For example, if uh, your data is of the SQL, JSON, Excel or CSV file, then it is best to use Pandas library for it. Pandas comes with uh, read CSV, read Excel, read JSON and read SQL commands which make it uh, very easy and convenient if you have files in these formats. Also, uh, the data frames can be created of a dictionary type object using lists and tuples.
but if your file is of a binary format for example if it has extension of uh, .mat or .arff or .wav then it is recommended to use scipy library and if there is column columnar data then numpy array should always be preferred and as far as the image and video are concerned then we can load them to a numpy array using the sk image library all these libraries interoperate very well with the scikit-learn and uh, i'll leave the links related to these libraries in the description below so by this point of time we think that uh, we have covered all the majorly used data forms and how to use uh, how to load the data in scikit-learn using them still if you think that uh, there is a data form or uh, any method which is missed and has not been covered yet then do mention us uh, then do mention it in the comments below and uh, we'll try to cover it up in the next video thanks for your time this is abhishek singh from programming knowledge and uh, do check out other machine learning videos of this channel and make sure to subscribe thank you